All right, everybody, just want to give you a tour of uh, my custom Shock 30 and kind of also just want to get your all's input because it is custom in a lot of ways. A lot's been modified um, from the original original hull design. And that's uh, kind of where I need some people's input because uh, it was designed under the old uh, Morsey Rules Shad Turner design boat. But the only thing I think really left on the boat that's original is, is pretty much the um, hull mold. Um, because a few things that you can just note right away, reverse open sugar scoop style transom, the, as far as I know, all the 3030 GPs were masthead rigs, you can see, um, it's quite a flexible small double double spreader fractional rig on here, uh, 13 and a point four uh, foot boom, um, the keel was or an original fin kill was replaced by the original owners now a high aspect ratio bulb kill uh, which I'll show you you can see more when we get inside um, and there's a lot of things that haven't seen a few Santana 3030s or 30 uh, GP videos um, I know are not necessarily original but anyway um, we'll just kind of go back to the cockpit here uh, two uh, I think Barriott 22 winches, cabin top winches, Lumar 40s and Lumar 40s self tailors in the back for the running backs. Uh, they did add the running back stays uh, when it was changed to a fractional rig with a little Tahatsu uh, four horse, or excuse me, six horsepower uh, four stroke, uh, which does great to power the boat around. Um, the one thing I've also noticed too is they moved the traveler down. I think I, I would assume they moved it down. Uh, every cockpit video tour I've seen it's been up top usually on the deck um, and uh, the rudder's also been I don't know if the rudder's been moved but I do know it has been replaced it's now a carbon fiber rudder along with the keel uh, fairing itself uh, is carbon fiber uh, looking forward though into the pretty standard companion way entry uh, just a little chinesium uh, solar panel we'll look down inside and I'll move some of this but some of the things that I'm pretty sure are not original when they did the high aspect ratio uh, kill bulb, uh, and I'll move the placemat out of the way so you can see underneath there, is also the wooden runners um, and the bulkheads uh, for, I think for a little bit of hull rigidity, rigidity. Um, but we'll move in and see that. You can see behind the fire extinguisher, that's an extension of the chain plates down to the bottom of the hole. Uh, obviously same on both sides, but pretty substantial chain plates. And as we move in, kill step mast, which we'll move back. Definitely a sitting height cabin. Uh, some additional uh, longitudinal stringers. The Four and aft runners that run to the keel box, and we'll go ahead and raise those up now. But purely for aesthetics, I just have a couple mats covering it. But you can see the steel top to the uh, keel and the hook um, that can be used to raise it for trailering because uh, the boat does have a trailer and or any other reason you might need to raise the, the keel. It does stick down uh, six feet nine inches. Um, as you can see under cockpit storage where the jib and Genoa are currently. Um, not much to see back there other than coming forward. Currently the mainsail cover is just sitting in the bow and in a small open, uh, I'm not going to call it a locker, where the uh, four state comes down and then a hatch that covers the top. But um, this is by no means original. I don't think I've seen, other than a Shock 40, anything with a keel similar to this, um, which a Shock 40 obviously is pretty well known for having a canting keel and a um, pretty finicky boat. Otherwise, we'll step out, continue forward.
composite sales done by bullet sales out of Arkansas for the the main and the jib and there is a 1.5 Genoa as well um, it equates to about 500 and 550 square feet of sale area respectively uh, as far as we have outer and inner jib car tracks um, don't actually use the inner tracks um, particularly much on this in fact I'd if I had my choice I would move the the longer tracks further outboard for sheeting better sheeting angles uh, we do I do keep one of the whisker poles there's two whisker poles and then uh, um, or excuse me two spinnaker poles a telescopic whisker pole um, I pretty much just use a telescopic pole because it's just so much lighter and easier to use and I do solo the boat quite a bit um, Lumar clutches a two-pack and a three-pack on the other side uh, some deck organizing hardware. I know it's not very bright, but uh, Sunto compass um, Mechanical uh, boom kicker A um, Couple spare halyards, etc. The rigging on this boat you can come down and see as the chain plates come up and I'll get a better look at that on the other side is a nitronic 50 steel rod rigging um, and as we look up the mast you can see double spreaders um, two sets of spreaders and they're straight spreaders this might be a better look at the chain plates as they come out and I've been trying to seal them up a little bit but it, it's always a battle to keep them going um, Otherwise, as far as deck hardware, everything runs aft to the cockpit, uh, which makes everything pretty easy for what I'm doing. Um, originally, this boat, not originally, um, the previous owners did have a racing foil on the boat um, to do quick sail changes for racing. Um, I don't use it. Um, I do race the boat around the cans every now and then, but I definitely I don't use the foil. I they I, I could have purchased it from them, but I didn't, and so maybe one day in the future. But you can see the deck organization layout. Um, you can also see that other than the forward hatch, there are no windows on the cabin top. Uh, a lot of which I appreciate one because there's just decreased drag on the hull as you're trying to sail. Uh, less things to seal up and leak, which is a big nice nice thing not to have to deal with um, Quite stainless steel stanchions um, And then just polyester lifelines Nothing fancy, but it works for sure And so I guess one of the real questions I have for a lot of the people who may be in the know about the old Morsi racing class um, is, you know, generally, if anybody's had any experience with shock 30s or 30, uh, 30 GPs, um, the original owners of this have since passed away, and the gentleman I bought it from was knowledgeable but not didn't know a ton of the history about the boat and as far as um, other than the keel and the rig, um, what was factory on the boat and then what they had changed. One thing I'm not 100% sure on, if you notice, if you look at a lot of shock 30s, they have the aluminum tow rails, which I believe bolt up the top deck to the hull. And this is a solid connection. It looks like it's been fiberglass. And either one, it's either been repainted but there's just a mismatch between the paint um, on the inside and outside and whether or not that was just something when they painted the, the hole or when they fiberglass that or if that's how all shocks came. Um, it is a pretty aggressive uh, non-skid, which I actually really like. At first I wasn't sure how I felt about it, but um, super secure, never going to slip and uh, holds up pretty well.
And so, if you have any uh, information, you know, um, or just point me places, I've tried to get a hold of Shock um, through email, Facebook, Instagram, just haven't heard much back. And so, I don't know if the original owners are involved in the company anymore. Um, and it doesn't have the quite the following that, say, boats like the Tartan 10 uh, and other racing classes might have. And uh, since it has been highly modified, trying to track it down, track down the history of it. The boat was originally named Mo for Less, essentially more for less, um, by the original owners. Um, and it was out of Arkansas, as I understand. It's always been fresh water. Um, but yeah, so anyway, hope you enjoyed the boat tour. If you got any information, definitely let me know in the comments. I appreciate it. Take care.